In this video, we will take a look at sending packets with different packet types. Before we do that, there's one fix I'd like to make. We were using a 4-byte unsigned integer for our packet size. However, the maximum possible packet size in TCP is actually 64 kilobytes. So, we can store that value with a 2-byte integer if we ever wanted to send a packet that large. So I'm going to go ahead and change the packet size to be stored in a 2-byte integer instead of a 4-byte integer. Let's go to our socket CPP where we have our send and receive functions that take in our packet. We're just going to change this to be a 16-byte integer. And instead of using host to network long, we will use host to network short since a 2-byte integer is a short. Now let's go down to where we are receiving. Same idea, we'll change these to be 2-byte integers, and instead of using network to host long, we will use network to host short. Now let's continue with the tutorial. Let's first create a header called packet type. For now, we're going to have our default packet type, which will be invalid. We're going to have our chat message packet type and then our integer array packet type, and these are just for testing for this video. For the packet type, I want it to take up two bytes, uh, so that way we can have, let's say, like 65,000 possible unique packet types, which I can't imagine you would ever need anything close to that. I'll have to include the standard int header, and that way we can access this data type. Now let's go into the packet header and we are going to include our new packet type header. There are a few things that we're going to add here. So currently, our buffer, when we clear it, the size goes to zero. We completely clear out the buffer. However, we are going to have the first two bytes of every single packet be the packet type. So when we clear the buffer, we won't want to set it to zero, but we'll actually want to set it to be enough bytes to hold our packet type, which would be two bytes. There's a few things we're going to add since every single packet will have a packet type. We will add in a function to get the packet type. We'll add in a function to assign a packet type. We will add a constructor that will take in a packet type. And for our constructor, we're just going to default to the invalid packet type. Now let's generate these definitions. For our constructor, what we're going to do is we're going to clear the packet and then we are going to call assign packet type and pass in the packet type pass into the constructor. If we go down to clear, what we're going to do is instead of clearing the buffer, we're going to resize the buffer. And this way we'll have just enough space in the buffer to store our packet type. After this, we are going to assign our packet type in the buffer. And when we clear a packet, we're just going to assign it the invalid packet type initially. And then we have to adjust our extraction offset to start extracting bytes after the packet type. By setting our extraction offset equal to the size of a packet type, then when we go to extract data, it will be starting right after the packet type bytes. Next, we have to have a way to get the packet type and have a way to assign the packet type. First, let's look at assigning the packet type. We know that the very first byte of our buffer will be where the packet type is stored, or more specifically, the first two bytes. So we're going to cast a pointer of type packet type to be pointing to the beginning of our buffer. So now we have a pointer pointing to the very beginning of our buffer, and we can access it as a packet type variable. What we will do is we will assign the value like this. So now we have assigned uh, the very first two bytes to be whatever packet type was passed in. Now we're almost done with this part, but there's one more thing we need to remember. Packet type is technically an unsigned integer that takes up two bytes. So whenever we store anything inside of our packet class, we want to make sure that it is ready to be sent over the network. All the data must be formatted in a way that when we call send, we can just send it and we don't have to worry about any 
conversions or anything. Because of this, we will need to convert this to network byte order. It's currently going to be in host byte order, so we need to convert it to network byte order. And then of course we have to cast this back to a packet type, so we'll use a static cast for this. And there we go, it's a little bit ugly, but pretty much we're taking our packet type that gets passed in, converting it to network byte order, and then casting it to a packet type, and then storing it. Now let's look at getting the packet type. Let's copy what we have. So the same idea, we're going to have a packet type pointer, and then we are going to go to return the packet type value. However, it is going to be in network byte order, so we need to convert it back to host byte order. So we'll call n2hs to convert a short back to host byte order. And then we have to cast this to a packet type. Once again, it's pretty ugly, but it gets the job done. Now let's set up a couple of different packets to send in the client. So we'll go to the client. Let's go down to where we were generating our packets before. Take out that code. And what we will do is we will have a string packet. And then we will have an integers packet. For the string packet, all that it will contain is one string. For my integers packet, we are going to have the first integer will be the size of the integer array, and then all the integers after that will be the actual elements inside of that array. So just to make this clear, I'm going to create actual variables to store what these are. So we have our array size, which is 6. So let's go ahead and put that inside of the packet first. Next, we need to append each individual integer into the packet. And we'll just do this with a for loop. Now we have two different packets that we could send. And we're just going to uh, randomly decide which one to send. So what we will do is we will just have our result values up here that we declare. And we will call rand. And of course, what we're doing is we're generating a random number. We're saying mod 2, so if we divide this number by 2, if the remainder is 0, then we'll do this. If the remainder is not 0, then we'll do this. So pretty much half the time we'll do whatever's in the if block, the other half we'll do whatever in the else block. So we'll either send the string packet or the integers packet. And now let's go into our server and handle receiving these different packets. The first thing we'll do is we're actually going to add a, for now we'll add a function just called process packet. If we successfully process this packet, we'll return true, otherwise we will return false. Now if we go down to our loop, we're going to take out where we were declaring those strings and take out the whole try catch. What we will do is we will say so if we fail to process the packet, we will break out of the while loop. Now let's go up to our process packet function, and we'll set up a switch case here. And the switch case will be based off of the packet's type. So of course, if we get a chat message, we will process the chat message here. If we get the integer array, we will process the integer array. And by default, we have not identified what our packet type is, we will just return false. Now let's look at how to process the chat message. It's pretty simple. Now let's look at how we would process our integer array. So first we are extracting the array size, and then we are having a for loop where we just extract each individual element. So what we're going to do is we're just going to print out what is the array size and what is each individual element. Let's go ahead and test this out. We're going to run the server first. And now let's run the client. You'll see what we're getting is we're randomly either getting the this is my string packet, the chat message packet, or we're getting our integer array packet. So this covers the basic idea of how you would handle uh, multiple packet types. In the next video, we will begin covering 
how to support Internet Protocol version 6.